930, Liz, let's get started. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Liz Kukla. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning. Maurice, if you could change the slide. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. You must be having something. Some no, trouble. I can cannot hear you. hear you. Who is I can this? Hear you. I think that's Terry uh, Hamilton Brown. Can you hear anybody? We should probably send her a chat. Yeah, Maurice, can you work with her? And then uh, Liz, go ahead and continue. Thank you. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. Next slide, Maurice. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on our particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Next slide, Mr. Woolens. Madam Chair, if you'd like me to call the roll, I will. Go ahead, please. Ms. Barnes. Here. Ms. Faith? Present. Do we have Ms. Brown on here? Yes, present. Thank you. And Ms. Britt? Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Wonderful. So this morning we do have one withdrawal. Calendar number 21-044 regarding the address of 7723 Harvard Avenue. Kamal Shaheen, owner, proposed to erect a uh, motor vehicle repair garage. Oh, sorry, establish use as a motor vehicle repair garage in a B2 semi-industry district. The applicant's attorney contacted us and stated that he would not like to go forward with the with the application and has withdrawn his appeal. All right, is that it? We have um, one postponement. Okay. Madam Chair, we do have a message from uh, looks like Marilyn Masinski. Did you want to? Is that about the Harvard one that we just heard is being with withdrawn? Yes, it is. It was. Um, I just want to make sure people knew because we're working with both them and also the new owner who is Broadway Scrap Metal. So I wanted to make sure that we were aware of that. But thank you. Thank you. Have a good day all. You too. Thanks. So Madam Chair, we do have one postponement. Not sure if I was able to get this to Maurice. It did come later uh, in the week. Yes, that's, no, for no, calendar, that. that's for calendar number 21-130. And that is regarding um, 1040 Harvard Avenue. 
of Grafster Girls LLC proposing to establish use as a residential facility for five occupants. Mm -hmm. The appellant stated that they uh, had not been able to complete the community input process and would like to have some more time. In fact, they stated they would like to have 45 days. So we, uh, if it's all right with you, Madam Chair, November 15th would be approximately that date. That works for me. Thank you. And okay. that's all we have. Okay. Um, I believe uh, I saw Councilman Slice on. We can start with yes, I'm day. here for I'm here for two items off from the same property owner. Okay. Okay. So, Ms. Faith, let's start with his, please. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh as a courtesy to the councilman, we're going to begin with calendar number 21 148. This is at 15040 Columbine Avenue. Christina Krebs, owner, proposes to erect a 15 foot by 20 foot one story frame pool house, a 16 foot by 36 foot in ground swimming pool, wooden pergola, and an above the ground jacuzzi on a vacant lot located in an A1 one family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are three. Madam Chair, do you want me to do the oath as well? Please. Uh, Madam, well, before you do that, Madam Chair, I would say that uh, you should probably combine the two uh, projects. They're pretty much totally related. The next one would be 21-149 at 3383 West 140, 151st Street. Right. Thanks, Maurice. I saw that they were completely different streets and uh, thought they were yeah, separate. Yeah, but it's the same but, project. But the same project, yes, thank you. So um, in addition, we're going to do a bundle on this then. So this is calendar number 21-149 at 3383 West 151st Street. Uh, Christina Krebs, again, owner, proposes to erect a 14 foot by 16 foot Womanized wooden second floor rear deck in an A1 one family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there is one. Okay. Now we'll move forward with the oath. All those present that are wishing to make statements and testimony on case number 21-148 and calendar 21-149. I'm about to read the oath. Following the oath, uh, your response will be I do, and then you will state your name and your address one person at a time for the recorder. At this point, I'm gonna ask you to raise your right hand and we're gonna swear you in. I do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I am about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Your response, please. I do. Your name and address, please. Uh, Brian Hennies, 19749 Telbur Avenue in Rocky River. Okay, thank you. Next. Christina Krebs. 3383 West 151st Street, Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Christina. Next. Am I sworn in as a, as a city official already, or do I need to swear in also, Ms. Faith? Uh, you just need to swear in. You can use City Hall as your address. Uh, I do. Uh, Charles Slife, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Thank you. Is there anyone else? No CDC present for this? All right, it appears that's everyone, Madam Chair. We can move forward. Thank you. History to property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll start with uh, Columbine, 15040 Columbine. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. Found that the most um, 
pertinent information is that in uh, June of 1938, a permit was issued to erect a dwelling and a garage. Uh, there is uh, one variance on file in calendar 02-314. A request was made to construct a deck on an existing building. And that variance was denied. Um, there are no uh, other records in the more recent history. And then Madam Chair for calendar number 21-149 at 3383 West 151st Street. There's been no change in the zoning. Couldn't find any records in the uh, records room for this address. There are no variances on file. And then in the uh, more recent, recent history in our cell system, found that in 2005, a permit was applied for to erect a two-story dwelling with attached garage. The status of that uh, in our system stated that uh, that permit is still open. And then uh, in 2007, a permit was issued to board up and secure all first floor basement openings. And there was an invoice also created to uh, board up those window, those openings as well. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Legal Standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the distance and placement requirements of the zoning code and for the property on West 151st, um, a variance from the rear yard requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, who's going to be the spokesperson for this project? Uh, my name is Brian Hennies. I can I can speak um, on behalf of the owner then. Do we have a letter for that? Do I, I do I do not, but I see that um, Christina Krebs is present yeah, here. Okay, great. I, Good. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was trying to come off mute, uh, but Brian, our architect is on and we have Councilman Slade, uh, but I think Brian, you could probably best serve as to walk us through our, our changes to the property itself. Yep. Uh, yeah, as long as the owner's president present, uh, we don't need a letter, so that's fine. So uh, go ahead, Mr. Haney. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to yes. double check. Uh, was uh Mr. Henney's sworn in? I don't recall. He was. Okay. I yeah. He I was. Raised my, I raised my hand and I spoke. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Great. Just wanted to double check. I didn't recall that. Sure. Um, I I'll just do a quick brief overview and then I can kind of speak to each of the um, the items that were in those adjudication letters. Um, uh, Miss Krebs has two properties that abut each other. Um, if you go to the next page might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, the 150th property that uh, runs east-west at the top um, is joined at the back of that property um, then to the Columbine um, parcel that goes north-south. And so uh, she has direct access to each of these. And I think some of the items that, are, that have come up about setbacks or clearances, um, we'd like to talk through since uh, what we would like to propose to do would not be um, infringing on any adjacent um, other property owner's property. It would just be within um, her own property. Um, but the uh, permanent residency is the parcel on the left, um, up towards the top, yeah, right, right up there. And then the vacant lot to the right is where the proposed pool, pool house, um, gazebo and hot tub would be. And we would enclose that with a fence um, similar to to what is being um, what is already installed on her property. Uh, we would complete it all the way around um, the property where there. Uh, I think the photo that started this out showed a couple a couple different styles, but we would complete that with a gate access off of Columbine. Um, the pool had originally planned to be 
uh, submitted and um, done under a separate uh, contract and proposal. But since um, there's some items that kind of overlap with the uh, distances, um, we're kind of lumping it in right here. Yep. Uh, so if it's all right, I'd like to, um, I'm not quite sure what the format would be, but the, like I said, the, the items in the non-conformance letter or the adjudication letter, uh, we'd be ready to to kind of talk to. Yeah, just speak to the, uh, yeah, the variances you're asking for today. Okay, so the first one I'll do with the um, 151st property is the rear yard um, with the deck that we'd like to do. If you go to the next page, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, and if you zoom in on that, that top, that top left um, plan, yeah, like right there, the, it says the required rear yard is um, 20 feet and what we are proposing would be seven feet. And so 20 feet back from the end of this property or 21 feet back from the end of this property is where the building is, the existing house, um, which we've gotten light gray there on the left. And so if we were to do, if we were um, confined to this 20 foot requirement, we would only be able to build off of the house about one foot, which wouldn't make any type of deck or storage really feasible. So the seven feet that is in the letter is the difference. If you zoom in a little bit more of our 14 foot projected deck, um, and then it would be seven feet to the end of the property. And so we're really, I guess it, the, the proposing of the seven feet is somewhat somewhat arbitrary because I guess we would just be requesting any um, variance to uh, to be able to build a deck, whether it was we built a deck that was six feet deep or fourteen foot deep. Either way, it would it would um, cross into that into that rear yard distance. Uh, Mr. Hennies or uh, Ms. Krebs can answer this question. Maybe. Uh... Are, have these lots been consolidated? Because I feel like these variances probably might not have popped up if they if they were if they are. I don't. So, I don't. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so this is Chrissy, and I would say that the thought behind not consolidating is based on that other property. Um, one day returning it to a house on the lot, which is, you know, what it used to be to have that ability to keep them separate, so that when we're able to still parse that lot off and have a house on it someday and it would be its own address versus putting them together and just having them as our property. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Madam, Madam Chair, I, I can also let you know that Adam Davenport, the neighborhood planner for the area had actually recommended that to the applicants uh, for the exact same reason that Ms. Krebs described that it probably made more sense to keep the, the parcels separate. Great. Uh, oh, and there he is right there. <laughs> okay. Can we swear Adam in right quick, uh, Ms. Faith, before we continue? Adam, I'm going to swear you in really quickly so you can make testimony. If you'll raise your right hand, please. And here's the oath. I swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth. Please state your I name do. and your address. I do, Adam Davenport, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Thank you, Adam. Okay, you can proceed. All right, perfect, perfect timing. Morning. Um, well, no, we're not, we're not ready for you yet, Adam. Oh, we're not. Okay. No, I was just, I just <laughs> wanted you sworn in before we uh, kept going. So preemptively, I, I interrupted okay. the architect. So, uh, Mr. Hennies, <laughs> you can continue. Uh, th that's okay. I, I was just speaking to the first point about requesting to build within that distance because we would have to request any type of a a variance to do any type of a deck or storage. So the seven feet we we felt was, you know, it's about a third of that depth uh, from the house to the property line. We didn't want to go any deeper. Uh, we thought that that would be in the event that that um, property on the back were to be turned over or separated, then um, that's still a sufficient distance away from the from the property line. Okay, go ahead, finish with the other ones. So the others would be, uh, let me jump over to um, to Columbine then. The, the first item was uh, pool house, swimming pool, pergola, jacuzzi structure on vacant lot is not permitted in a residential district as primary use. Um, so this might go back to whether it needs to be a 
um, cons uh, the lots consolidated or not. And so we were requesting not to consolidate them. So that being the case, it would be, um, it would be a separate structure. It would not be primary uh, residential, um, but it would be serving for Ms. Krebs's primary residence, which is adjacent to it. Um, I can probably speak to the, uh, so I don't know if there's going to be, needs to be more conversation on, on that, but I can probably speak to the other two a little bit quicker. Um, hopefully go through those and then we can circle back on that first item. Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. The, the pergola minimum distance from property line, it says to be 18 inches and we're proposing one foot. Um, we didn't think this was too significant of a request. Um, and so that, that's really just the, the size of the pergola. If you zoom in in the top left, um, kind of next to where we just were, yeah, on that, on that property. Here? Uh, nope, top left. Or just kind of pan over to the to the left then. Yep. Um, so you so you can see kind of on the Columbine property line in the top left corner, we've got four posts that represent the pergola. Um in in those are it's it's pretty easy to to move those if need be. Um, but again, since it was only a six inch difference, we were hoping that would be all right. We wouldn't go any closer. Um, but again, if it's not acceptable, we would be able to to meet that 18 inches. Uh, the other, the last item then is the in-ground swimming pool it should be located in the rear half of the lot at 85, proposing 56. I was not quite sure, I guess, where some of these dimensions had, had come up or some of these uh, figures were come up. Um, and so if if whomever you could probably go back to the last page uh, the previous page would be a better site plan to see the entire the entire lot yeah at the bottom um the bottom view yeah so we feel that the the um, i think the 85 I, I took a measurement um it, it came to be about 86 feet but 80, that dimension was from the back of the property to the front of where we're proposing to put our fence, not where the front of the property line was. And so I don't know if somebody was um, um, kind of took the, the wrong points because the, the entire depth of the lot is over 117 feet. Uh, we have a survey that was done and was submitted as a part of this response that shows that. So the rear half of that lot um, if we had to keep the pool in the rear half, um, I think we are off by maybe about four feet right now. Um, instead of it being proposing the 56, all that we really would be doing was proposing the, the four feet. Because half, half of in the rear half, that means we would have to be 58 feet to the front of the pool back from the lot. And I think it's about 62. If that if that makes sense, I I have um I have a graphic here. I don't know if I'd be able to throw it up on the screen and all that I could show to that. But um, but in any case, I I just wanted to see if whomever maybe reviewed that made that note if maybe they could clarify uh, what exactly that was. Well, we have your we have your testimony on record. I doubt if anyone from Building and Housing that reviewed that is on on the on the call right now. Okay. So um, thank you. But, but as you can see, so like I said, I think the 85 was taken from where if you zoom in, you can kind of see the front of the gate or the front of the fence. I think that might have accidentally been measured from that point. But as you can see, the pool is um, like uh, within about four feet of being in the rear half of the lot. So we didn't want we could move it four feet back closer to the pool house. Um, we we're hoping not to just so that it wasn't so close and keep a, a, a comfortable walking kind of distance around there. So. The, the variance or the difference that we would only be requesting would be about four feet, um, not not 56. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, now Adam Davenport. Good morning, thank you. Um, I think, so I've had a, a few contact points with the owner uh, over the past few months. And I think our our main kind of planning concern uh was actually to to keep these lots separate um and not consolidate them so in the future if uh somebody didn't desire 
the pool for the house over on um, 151st Street, then the lot on Columbine can still be reserved for a new house or a house in the future. Um, you know, this isn't this isn't land bank land. This wasn't given away by the city. This was privately owned for for some time, and 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 you know, this is being proposed in front of us as as part of that. So it wasn't kind of um, you know, vacant land that way, which we normally see through some of these these uh, projects on on um, on on well on vacant land that, that we have. Um, so I, I guess that's that's our kind of main uh, concern with that. We're generally fine with the the plan. It's I think the the main thing of note should be um, uh, screening for the the adjacent neighbors and uh, I don't know if that was was talked about before I got on, but I think um, being neighborly with this plan and shielding kind of the the pool from the street or the uh, adjacent residents to the east would be of the utmost importance. The, the western half of the lot, I think, is just garages on the other side. Yeah, they have fencing, um, and the owner did take your advice and are leaving the. A lot separate. I asked why not consolidate, and so she told me that came from city planning. So, um, yeah. mm -hmm. so if you're if you're okay, we'll move we'll move forward. Yeah, those are those are those are all my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Um, I think we only have the councilman left. So go ahead, councilman. Thank you, and um, thank you for uh, moving this to the top of the agenda. Uh, I, I am supportive of this uh, complete project, and I think just one thing to mention uh, as it relates to the uh, set of variances for the Columbine property, um, and specifically the one um, about uh, accessory uses just sequentially in order to build a house on this property uh, in the future, it makes sense to build in the back first. And then, you know, instead of building the, the primary structure and then trying to build accessory units behind it, now there's a structure impeding access. Um, so I think that that just makes sense uh, from a, 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 a method of work. Um, but I believe that this, these, these projects, uh, or the, the this totality of the project works well for the neighborhood. I'm excited uh, at the uh, level of investment and, you know, that's for, Quite honestly, some of these parts of the zoning code, uh, you know, I think it's worth the planning commission and council putting our heads together and thinking through uh, maybe what parts of this might be a little out of date and what are we doing to allow people to make improvements on their property. By right. So, I totally uh, welcome, I, 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 I totally welcome that conversation, yeah. Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> So I, 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 I'm uh, asking for your support. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'll open up to the board. Any uh, questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I thought we had another resident that had uh, was sworn in another Brian. Or was, was he actually for a different case? Yeah, I think that's a different case. No. Okay. All right. Or maybe that was, uh, that was Mr. Hennies and I just misread the first, the last name. All right, so uh, in any event, uh, we have the support of city planning. We have the support of the councilman um, and uh, it seems like a good plan for the use of the lot going forward. Um, and uh, with that, Madam Chair, I think we can go ahead and approve uh, calendar 21-148 and 21-149. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. Second, Ms. Barnes. Okay, call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes, I did not hear you. Barnes, yes. Ms. Faith. Yes. Ms. Britt. Yes. Calendar 21-148 and 21-149 are granted. They will be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Good luck, Ms. Krebs. Uh, we'll know where the party is next summer. Yeah. I was gonna say, when's the pool party? Yeah. 
<laughs> soon, as, soon as we get our, our uh, construction permit, we'll get it going. <laughs> thank, thank you all very much. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Do we have any other council people on? on uh... We we do not. So I think you can. I don't see any. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back so, to the top. Back to the top. That takes us to calendar number 21-146 at 3811 Clinton Avenue, also known as 3809 Clinton. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going out with my throat this morning. Uh, Gary Martin, owner, proposes to erect a two-story frame single-family residence and convert a rear house to a carriage house to include two parking spaces in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances, of which there are four. Uh, of note is number four, which uh, is section 341.02B, which state that Landmarks Commission design review approval is required on this project. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that, we will move to swearing in those persons that are wishing to make testimony and comments on case number 21-146. I'll ask you to raise your right hand. I'm gonna read the oath. Following the oath, your response will be, I do. Then you will state your name and your address, one person at a time for the recorder. So here we go. Please raise your right hand. I do swear or affirm that the testimony I am about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Your name and your address, please. Uh, Joel Soloway, S-O-L-L-O-W-A-Y, 3897 Clinton Avenue. We are just to the west of the property in question. Thank you, Mr. Soloway. Hello, Donna. Thanks. Donna Gregonis um, with Ohio City Incorporated and Tremont West Development Corporations. I do, and our office is 3308 Lorraine Avenue. Thank you, Donna. I do, Donald Pettit, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. Next. Do we have the appellant or an agent for the appellant present? Um, if I may, excuse me. Um, I think you postponed this in the beginning of the agenda. I was sort of half listening, but. No. It, no, we didn't no. postpone. The, uh, no, what was post postponed was Harvard Avenue 10404 Harvard Avenue was postponed, not this one. Oh, sorry. So we don't have an agent for the appellant or the appellant present. All right, we'll put this that's, on pause. That's unfortunate. Okay. So number, this case we're gonna loop back to later. We'll move on to calendar number 21-147 at 2222 Fulton Road. AHA Fulton, LLC owner proposes to construct a three-story 12-unit apartment building in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are six. Number six being section 341.02 which states that review and approval of the sitting planning commission is required. So I am now going to swear in those individuals wishing to make comment or testimony on case number 21-147. Please raise your right hand. I'm going to read the oath. Following the oath, your response will be I do, and then you'll state your name and your address one person at a time. So here we go. Please raise your right hand. I do swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state I your do. name and your address. Uh, Wesley Harper, uh, Port Harper Architects, 812 Huron Road East, 
Cleveland 44115. Thank you, Mr. Harper. Good to see you again. You too. Next, I do, please. I do, James Asimus, principal of AHA Fulton LLC, 2222 Fulton Road, Cleveland, Ohio. I do, Matthew Moss, City Planning Commission. I do, Donna Gregonis, um, Ohio City Incorporated Entrement West Development Corporations, 3308 Lorraine Avenue. Thank you. Next. Is that everyone then? I think so. All right. Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you. Uh, history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned at general retail. Then in 1985, it was changed to the current zoning of two family. I only found in our records administration office that a permit was issued in 1917 to erect a garage. I found no other records in that office. There are no variances on file and nothing of note in the more recent history. That's all that I have. Okay, phantom property. All right, uh, legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the Austry parking, maximum and gross floor area, parking location, and screening requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty, not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and the granting of variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Uh, I'm assuming Mr. Harper is going to be the spokesperson here. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, so as uh, described, uh, we are proposing a 12-unit uh, apartment building here on Fulton Road. Um, uh, the site itself is roughly 70 feet wide by 105 feet deep. Um, and so, uh, as the site plan shows here, we have a structure that um, kind of staggers uh, the design uh, relative to Fulton Road to kind of match some of the dimensions of the, uh, the other uh, residential uh, structures in the area. Um, each unit um, on the first floor would have a front porch uh, that kind of engages the sidewalk. Um, uh, this has, uh, you know, been something that we, we deal with a lot in our projects, you know, trying to create a, a nice pedestrian experience uh, along the first floor. And so we've uh, been presenting this uh, presentation uh, to Block Club, as well as uh, City Planning Commission have uh, received support. Uh, at each stop. Um, we have seven parking spaces shown in the rear of the property. Um, and then we are also eliminating uh, a large curb cut on Fulton Road, which opens up uh, at least one space uh, for on-street parking. Um, uh, again, you can see uh, Japan Court uh, to the west of our parcel, which would uh, lead to the parking lot. Uh, in the back. Um, I, I think one of the variances listed uh, is that we're looking to um, uh, build something or, or build parking uh, without doing uh, a fence. I, I, I don't think that's something uh, that would be a big issue uh, in us adding to the project. Um, uh, so I, I think that's something I can discuss with the developer. Um, uh, James Asimis uh, is on the call with us today. Um, if there's any questions that need to be uh, directed towards him. Um, so really, uh, go to the next slide. Here's the floor plans of the upper levels. Uh, these are relatively uh, smaller units to uh, appeal to 
a kind of a, a middle market uh, price point. Next. Uh, here we have the uh, Fulton facing elevations. Again, uh, in addition to staggering the facades, we're looking to break up the overall mass with uh, differing colors of, of siding. Next. Here's the south elevation. Next. West elevation. This is what you'd see as you're, you're pulling into the parking lot in the back. Next. And the north elevation next. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, so again, uh, we, we've been through the neighborhood process for this project. Uh, we have received support along the way. And uh, you know, I, I, unless uh, Mr. Asimis has anything to add, I, I think we can open this up uh, to questions or comments. I don't. Thank you, Wes. Okay. Um, Donna? Hi, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Thank you for um, allowing me and our organization to continually make comment. Um, I wanted to state that on Friday, I sent a letter to Secretary Kukla um, regarding some of the community feedback that we've received. So we've been using, um, Ohio City Corporate has been using an online engagement platform called Corbinize to collect feedback on this project and I um, attached a link um, and other information so that anyone could publicly review that, but the developers have diligently followed the community process that was requested of them and the community is largely in favor um, and most of the feedback that we have regarding the variances are um, that there is definitely a need for this type of housing and we really, um, Overall, the support of active first floor space is really positive and um, the only thing is that people and we would like to make sure that the parking is screened in some way. Um, and that's mostly it, but yeah, mostly positive. So thank you. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Matt Moss. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Matt Moss with the Cleveland City Planning Commission. Uh, as mentioned by the appellant's designer, uh, this project has been through design review, has received schematic approval from the City Planning Commission. Uh, the only condition that the committee asked them to include is that they provide covered bicycle parking as part of the site plan, which they agreed to accommodate, and, and we fully expect to confirm uh, once this project comes through for final approval. And as uh, Mr. Harper mentioned, this project, I think, is achieving a lot of our goals in terms of adding walkable urban fabric to the street, uh, to Fulton, providing ground for living, uh, providing parking in the rear off the alley. So it's meeting a lot of our design goals and we really appreciate them working with us to achieve that. Thank you, Matt. Okay, I'll open it up to the board. Uh, any questions or comments? Um, if not, you can throw a motion in there as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple questions to Mr. Harper. Uh, so the front elevation, you mentioned different colors of exterior siding. Are we looking at the colors now? It looks like uh, gradations of green. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, what are, are the uh, apartments all the same square footage and what square footage would that be? No, they do vary quite a bit. Um, uh, just with the nature of how the stair kind of makes its way up at each level, changing the, the configuration a bit, but they range from, uh, I believe, 550 square feet on the first floor up to, I think, 600 square feet on the, the third floor. So uh, the range, I would say, is, you know, 520 to 600. Okay. All right. And do we have an idea of what those are going to rent out for? Uh, we don't know at this point. Um, James, I don't know if you have any additional comment on that front? Uh, sure. Uh, the idea is that they'll rent for uh, a lower rate than other new apartments uh, in the area. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I think that satisfies my questions. I think we have support of city planning on this. We have support of the CDC. Um, it sounds like it's, you know, uh, 
Ms. Gregonius has uh, indicated that uh, there's been an opportunity for residents to offer feedback and it's been generally positive. So with that, I think we can go ahead and uh, approve uh, calendar number 21-147. Second. Second, Ms. Brown, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Barnes. Uh, go ahead, call the roll, please. We all these bees on the board. <laughs> Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Ms. Barnes? Yes! <laughs> Ms. Bates? Yes. Ms. Britt? <laughs> yes. Calendar 21-147 is granted. It'll be Thank ratified you. next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Thank did you, you want to loop back to that first case or just keep going? No, we'll keep going. All right. That takes us to calendar number 21-150 at 2260 Freeway slash West 14th Street. Uh, this has a PPN number of 004-10-030. Uh, the City of Cleveland, City of Cleveland HGY proposes to construct an eight unit apartment building and six car parking lot in a G2 local business district and urban form overlay district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are four. Number four is of note, which states that approval from the city planning commission is required. That concludes the reading of the case. Now we will move on to swearing in all those persons wishing to make testimony on, the, on case number 21-150. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. I'll re read the oath. Following the oath, your response will be I do, and you'll state your name and your address one person at a time. So here we go. Please raise your right hand. I swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do, Rick Marin. I do, Daniel Sirk. Up, oh, gentlemen, I need your addresses, please. I'm sorry. I do Rick Naren, 629 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Marin. Next. Daniel Sirk, architect, 1322 Old River Road, Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Sirk. Next. Uh, I do uh, Brian Dardis. 28601 Chagrin Boulevard, Woodmere. Thank you, Mr. Dardis. Donna, are you with us again? Yes, uh, I do. Donna Gregonis, uh, Tremont West Development Corporation, uh, 3308 Lorraine Avenue is my office. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I do. Donald Pettit, uh, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. And is there anyone else? I do, Matthew Moss, uh, City Planning Commission, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Thank you, Matt. All right, that should be everyone, is it? Great, back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. In the, um, sorry, and then it was changed to local retail in 2017. I apologize, I wasn't able to find the date of the establishment of the urban form overlay district. Uh, perhaps Mr. Moss can tell us the date of that. Um, and then I couldn't find any records on um, this specific address in our um, administration office. There are no variances on file and nothing of note in the more recent history. That's all that happened. Thank you. Legal standard, please. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Pelon is requesting area variances from the principal street frontage build out, off street parking, screening, and rear yard requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, the appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Okay, thank you. Um, who's going to be the spokesperson? Uh, I am Rick Marin, the owner, a developer, and I will turn it over to Dan Sirk, the architect. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Dan. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Again, my name is Daniel Sirk. I'm an architect and the owner of SA Group, located here in Flats East Bank, speaking on behalf of Rick Marin. The project before you today is the second phase of a small residential development at the gateway to the vibrant Treedmont neighborhood located near the intersection of Fairfield Avenue and West 14th. The subject properties exist as a result of a somewhat recent inner, chain, inner belt bridge reconfiguration project, and this site is directly adjacent to that public right of way. The eight units of phase one of the project were recently completed, successfully completed, and even before the tenant started to move in, a desire to infill the incomplete urban fabric began to be discussed. A second bookend building, which is the subject of today's proceeding, was contemplated. My client was able to successfully collaborate with the city of Cleveland and ODOT to obtain the various parcels of vacant land necessary to complete phase two. The assembled parcels, however, create a unique piece of land that is triangular in shape. This triangular shape has created the hardship for which relief is being sought today, comprising of the three items identified in the zoning review, including the rear yard setback, parking configuration, and the inability to comply with the strict interpretation of the codified urban form overlay. With respect to the urban form overlay, it is interesting that the genesis of this project was a desire to address the fabric of the neighborhood. However, technically, the 80% frontage requirement could not be achieved. As stated earlier, which should be evident on the site plan, the triangular shape of the property limits the ability to comply with this requirement. Please note that my client could technically be compliant, but he has in, in lieu agreed to purchase this land in order to landscape it and maintain this area as part of the overall project. The parking is again a result of the unique shape, and this area of the site was discussed at length with the local design review committee. The final agreed upon configuration is necessary to comply with other sections of the zoning code, namely the number of off street parking spaces. Please note that this project did receive unanimous support from the Tremont West Design Review Committee and obtained a certificate of appropriateness from the Landmarks Commission. The rear yard setback is the final item for which relief is sought and again related to the hardship created by the geometry of the site and this should be considered moot as this is located directly adjacent to a public right of way. Madam Chairman, this concludes my brief presentation and I'm prepared to respond to any questions related to this appeal. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on the phone to please need to speak? Okay, I'll, I'll move on to Donna. Hi, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Um, thank you for listening to the comments of our community and CDC, Tremont West Development Corporation. So this project was reviewed by the Economic Development Committee of Tremont West Development Corporation on September 2nd to discuss the second phase of Mr. Marin's Tremont Oaks project. And the committee raised a motion to support this project with all committee members present abstain from voting. Therefore, the motion passed. Um, and our committee members discussed this matter a few times regarding their concerns of Tremont Oaks, the first phase of Mr. Marin's project, and sub subsequently what he's planning to do for the second phase, which is the exact same thing. Um, the committee understands that the variances of design proposed are not out of the ordinary and they are typically granted. But the main concerns 
for from a, a, approval of the project uh, and the community and the committee have both raised um, a lot of opposition in proposing a second building to be approved with the use of a full time Airbnb in this location. Um, so there are concerns that the occupancy permit that has been uh, has not been respected by using a building permit for long term residents and instead he's been using it as a full time Airbnb. And the committee does not understand um, the excuse that Mr. Marin has used because he is violating the laws here with the Airbnb regulations and short term rentals. Um, the failure to obey the city of Cleveland emergency Airbnb ordinance. Um, so their members, our members discuss the regulations that are in place for short term rentals. And um, these rules and regulations were enacted years ago, but city council does need to work towards regulations on Airbnb that will allow reasonable use while protecting the neighborhood. And the tax abatement for this was granted based on the intended original use for the building as long-term residential, not short-term as it has been used in this first phase. So again, understanding that there is no real objection with the specific variances, but the use that is being proposed here. Um, and there's a fundamental concern in their neighborhood and the community development organization that the use is not in line with the certificate of occupancy that is being sought here and that the city should enforce their own Airbnb rules. So if you were to approve this, you would also be going against the rules of short-term rentals. And um, yes, so this was also reviewed at the Landmarks Commission, but because they mostly look at design, they approved it, um, but there was a lengthy discussion regarding the use, and that is why there were people voting in opposition of the project. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear in the discussions. And I know that Secretary Kukla has received a lot of letters and notes about this project, um, as, opposed, and as well as our office has. And I just wanted to make that clear that largely um, the community is in opposition of full-time Airbnb being used here with residential um, occupancy permit. So just wanted to make that clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Donna. I don't believe he's asking for a use permit today, so I don't know okay. how much that testimony will, will affect the decision, but so thank you. Sorry, um, I just wanted to make it very clear that that yeah, is yeah. an issue for us. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marin, do you have any response or the architect have response to the community concerns here? Um, I could respond on several matters. Um, we did meet with the block club. We got a very positive uh, response in contrast to the CDC's comments. So people were supportive of it. Um, we've also indicated to the CDC that we are not trying to violate anything. And we'd be more than happy to discuss with someone uh, what proportion should be apartments and what proportion should be Airbnb and have gotten no cooperation or discussion on that. I think uh, the CDCs are using this project to get to uh, another issue to have city council put some regulations on Airbnbs, which is fine and we will adhere to those, but we have not violated anything. We do have in hand registrations uh, for the Airbnbs um, and basically what, what has happened is this was built as an apartment building and or a, a condominium building like many projects we've done. Um, I can describe to you the micros, but probably not appropriate for this. Landmarks has heard about all that. And um, it, it needs to be determined how we use the building, whether it becomes and that's part of our marketing strategy was Airbnbs are easy to convert to long-term uh, apartments, which in fact we have done in the university circle area where we started with air, eight Airbnbs there 
and we are now converting, we have three signed leases and now going to the fourth uh, to make one floor permanent residence and one floor Airbnb. Um, that discussion never came up in the Tremont area. Also, uh, uh, as we, these microbes are very unusual products. Uh, we're not sure whether in the long run they should be Airbnbs, they should be apartments, or they, or they should be condos. And that's the process we're going through. The Airbnbs were the easiest ones to convert to other uses. And that's why we started with that. The Tremont project is only three months into uh, uh, rental. And we, we, we rented it to a professional management company that uh, the CDCs have acknowledged that they're very good and they're very professional. And I guess that's enough that it, I should say. Thank you, uh, Ms. Aaron. Uh, the neighborhood planner, Mac, are you still here? I am, Madam Chair. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have much more to add beyond the concerns I think raised by, by Donna and the community. I think doing some research about the use of this, it does seem like regulating this exact type of condition isn't present in our current zoning code. What I really want to speak to to you all today is are the variances that are being requested. Thank you. Uh, we're in a we're in a really interesting spot here. I'm sure as you all are aware in terms of where we're at with our zoning codes and specifically in this area. Uh, this zoning map here was amended in 2017 to include uh, some changes to the underlying zoning, but also to implement the urban form overlay. And a lot of times we have variance requests for uh, related to projects that feel like they can't because of the built environment, because of economic conditions, because of financial constraints. They, they can't comply with the code and in many ways the code is recognized to be antiquated and not achieving uh, the goals of the city the goals of and desires of community members here i think because we have updated the code and we've reviewed variance requests along this street relatively recently in the past 12 to 18 months that we're not in that i don't believe we're in that same situation on this street so remembering that in granting variances, they shouldn't be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. The urban form overlay purpose states that it's established to foster a high level of walkability and design quality for Cleveland's urban streets. The urban form will do this by requiring pedestrian oriented building features, preserving and enhancing the architectural character of new and existing buildings and protecting public safety by minimizing conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians. With that said, and the reason why I share that information is I understand and I think agree with the appellant's characterization of not being able to meet the requirements because of the, I think that standard is 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 demonstrated. The difficulty in complying with that is demonstrated by the site plan. However, I have expressed in other cases, and I will express it in this case, that I think not screening the parking does not meet the purpose of the urban form overlay. If the goal of the code, of this code specifically, is to foster a high level of walkability and to minimize conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians i think a screening element of some kind should be required along the parking i think that because of the configuration of the site uh, it might not need to specifically be a three and a half foot tall masonry wall i think the height is fine but again the challenge is i think there could be a hardship here for not providing specifically that level of design quality but i do not feel comfortable with this parking layout as it's designed, because I think it permits really by the design of it for us to work on the sidewalk to impede the sidewalk, impede the pedestrian condition. And I think that that is contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. So I would say that I, it, is, it would be my preference again to meet the spirit and purpose of that code. That if it were a choice between having one less parking space or not meeting the off street parking code, preserving the pedestrian environment is the priority here and that is stated in the code. As adopted by city council. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about that. Thank you. Can I respond? Can I respond? Yeah, I was gonna ask you, are you be willing to to yeah. do screening? Yeah. Um this this was brought up uh this exact issue that Matt's bringing up was brought up by Tremont Landmarks 
as well as city landmarks. And it's hard to see from the site plan, but the idea is where the second row of cars to the north, everything to the north of that in that triangular section is gonna be landscaping above cars. So as you drive down the street, you won't see the cars from there. The other thing that landmarks, city landmarks requested was a fence to go along where the uh, cars are. And we did incorporate that fence into the project uh, above three and a half feet. So the bottom line is from the point of the triangle all the way, except for the driveway to the building, there is obstructed view with a fence and landscaping where you won't see those cars. So the intent was to meet the urban overlay requirement. And another requirement of urban overlay is that we needed six parking spaces for this size project. If we cut it down to five, we would not be, meet that requirement, which would uh, be, a, a, it, it's basically a catch 22 based on the design of this um, triangular space. It's an unusual space. It can't be used for anything else. And we wanted to make it beautify it and also functional so that as people come in to Tremont from the north, this will have a very positive view from the landscaping. And then everyone has been very favorable about the view of the buildings from the facade. Um, those aren't the, the best pictures. I think Dan has better pictures, but in any case, um, that would all be beautified instead of looking. And I think it meets the urban overlay concept. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I'll go to Ms. Kukla. She's had her hand raised. And then uh, Matt uh, looks like he has. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just back to uh, Ms. Bragonis's comments. Uh, I don't believe I've received any uh, actual letters. If she's been copied on those, if she could forward those yes. again to me, um, I'm not seeing them in my inbox. And also, if we could have Mr. Riccardi um, respond to her comments about the Airbnb ordinances and the issues here at this site, um, staff's read of the code was that the um, those ordinances only apply to residentially zoned parcels, and this is zoned local retail. So if Mr. Riccardi could... Uh, expand on those ordinance that she may be talking about regarding restrictions on the um, short term rental units. Thanks. Yes, this is Richard Riccardi. That is true. The um, short term rental regulations are only applicable to residential districts, not to retail districts. Thank you, Mr. Riccardi. Uh, okay, we'll go to Matt now. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to clarify my comments about the screening of the parking lot. My concern and my interpretation of the code isn't necessarily that the car is be hidden from the street. I, I think the intent in the code is to minimize conflicts. And I, I don't see it noted on the site plan, but where the parking spaces are along the sidewalk, I think the provisions in the code that require the staff screening are there to keep cars separated from where we expect and are in tell people to be, which is on the sidewalk. So I'm less concerned that it that it screens and make the cars invisible and that but more so that it protect that space and, and make it clear to clear to vehicle operators that they shouldn't be parking on the sidewalk. And I, I don't believe I think the intent of the code is to create a physical barrier. And I think without that it it allows by design and that to happen, whether it's it, it becomes a matter of of trusting drivers and and property owner to enforce that and and it really puts no, the burden, I think, on the community instead. In fact, that's exactly what uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, we're gonna we're gonna pause that because what we're not gonna do is work out the site plan here at the end okay. of the day. Like whatever is here is what we're gonna, you know, rule on. We can't have uh, a working session on on cases here. So I'm gonna go back to Donna. Did you have something else to say? Yes, um, I just wanted to state um, that regarding the letters, 
I believe that people sent letters to me with the name of Tremont Oaks. They weren't looking at this at the, as the parcel number. Um, so I don't think that many people even knew that this was happening today or else they probably would have requested to be on the meeting um, to directly state their opposition. So um, I guess Mr. Marin sort of got lucky in that regard. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Donna. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Marin. Um, say what you have to say quickly before I open it up to my board. Okay, real quick on Matt's point. Um, there, it, it will be a, a complete barrier from the sidewalk because the landscaping, you won't be able to drive or go onto the triangular landscaping uh, behind the cars, and there'll be a fence uh, erected along the sidewalk along there so that it is the intent of the urban overlay district. That's all. Great, thank you. Yes, Madam Chairman, this is Daniel Sirk, just really quickly. Um, yes. The site plan before you today on the screen was adjusted for our final presentation to the Landmarks Commission prior to obtaining the certificate of appropriateness. And the plan was adjusted. This parking that you're seeing here is not exactly as the final design as Matt pointed out. The parking has been adjusted to allow for a physical fence to be constructed between the sidewalk and the ADA access way shown, as well as the first parking space. So the final design um, does include that physical barrier, and that is what we discussed. Um, it won't have landscaping, but it will have a physical barrier between that first parking spot and the sidewalk, as Matt pointed out. So I didn't um, provide you that final um, configuration if the motion today just carries the fact that that fence is required as it was not shown on the site plan submitted to this body. Great, thank you. And I see Matt nodding his head, so I think that's a good thing. Um, I will open it up uh, to the board. Actually, um, do we have a certificate of appropriateness from Landmarks? We didn't swear in Mr. Paddock, but does he have something to say or Liz, do we have that? Oh, great. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, board questions, comments, motions. Uh, Madam chair to, uh, the architect, uh, since we're not looking at the plans, uh, with the fence, sh um, actually, uh, shown on it. As you mentioned, could you tell us what the fence is going to be? Yes, um, it's a city standard fence that you've seen, um, you know, black picketed fence that runs the length of the first parking spot um, and then picks up again as you enter on the other side of the drive where the striping for the ADA parking is shown. So it would be a consistent fence that you've seen. We've modeled it after the ones that we've done for Rick at um, near the West Side Market. And so will it return on the corner? Will it return back towards the building on the corner of the first parking place? And will it go down and uh, cover the perimeter of the triangle on the uh, uh, on the side right by the ADA parking? Um, good, good question. That was discussed at length with uh, Tremont West. Um, it will not. The fence will not return in either position, and it will not run all the way the length of the property down to the end of the triangle. We um, had discussed that back and forth, and the concept was to not have that fence run all the way down West 14th to the end of the triangle, but to allow the landscaping that's going to happen in the triangle to dominate that that view corridor. And then in addition, Rick, you didn't mention it earlier, but I know that you're working with the local committee to landscape the, the two large islands as well, adjacent to the, the tree lawns, let's say, um, along West 14th that are currently devoid of any landscaping. I know it's not your property, but I know you're working with them to also enhance the landscaping along West 14th. So to answer your question directly, the fences are straight line, the length of each parking space they're adjacent to. So that that leads me back to uh, Mr. Moss. Is that adequate fencing in your view? Yes, I think that that would achieve the separation 
as long as it is not just left open, which was my concern based on how this site plan currently presents today. So it's going to be straight line fencing. I'm assuming four feet high, typical black metal, 50% opacity, running the length of the parking spaces uh, that flank the curb cut. Is that correct? That is correct. And that is how it is officially submitted to landmarks for the certificate appropriate. It is shown in a rendering that they reviewed. All right, Madam Chair, um, I think we can go ahead uh, before us today are the variances uh, on the site. Uh, the other issue, I think, is not something that is, uh, you know, related to uh, what we're trying to adjudicate on today. Um, we've heard testimony with regard to the fencing. Uh, Mr. Moss from city planning has uh, indicated that that is adequate fencing um, and uh, landmark has uh, weighed in on this as well. Um, uh, Mr. Sirk has pointed out that the appellant is trying to do some additional landscaping in the area as well. Um, in addition to that triangular shape. Uh, so uh, with what's before us today, I think, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> I think we can go ahead and grant this variance uh, conditionally. Uh, we're going to require a submission of a cut sheet of the fencing and uh, in a revised site plan uh, that clearly indicates uh, both plant view and elevation view of the fence that's going to be installed. Uh, so, with that, I motion that we make a conditional approval of the variances, Madam Chair. Thank you. Can I have a second? Yes, you can. Merlene, second. Ms. Barnes, second. Go ahead, call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Vape? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21 150 is granted conditionally. It'll be held pending the revised drawing and cut sheet. Once we receive that, we will ratify it on the following Monday and we will send you a letter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, uh, we had 21-044 that was withdrawn. So we'll be skipping over that. Moving on to calendar number 21-107. This case was postponed from August 23rd, 2021. Uh, this is, uh, the address is 0 St. Clair Avenue with a parcel number of 102-20-002. This is regarding a public work in invoice. Claudia B. Seats et al. appeals under the authority of section 76-6B of the Charter of the City of Cleveland and section 329.02D of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances from the decision of the hearing officer dated March 17, 2021 to uphold the City of Cleveland's Department of Public Works to issue invoice W0-7010-1002 4064 regarding abating nuisances, parenthetically grass cutting, at the subject property. This was filed June 14th of 2021 with no, no testimony. The first postponement was made at the uh, request of the city to allow time for further review. So, we'll move on to the swearing in. All those persons that are present wishing to make testimony and statement on calendar number 21-017. I'm about to swear you in. I'm gonna ask you to raise your right hand. I'll read the oath. Following the oath, your response will be I do, and then state your name and your address one person at a time. So here we go. Please raise your right hand. 
I do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, Alana, this is Lori Wagner, and it's not ideal for your lawyer to be testifying, but nobody else was willing to research this issue, so I volunteered. And I did advise the parties, the city parties and the other parties that they did not need to attend here because this is a simple factual issue. Um, what I have determined, I, I don't know if I should be testifying or not, but I will say I do, Lori Wagner, 601 Lakeside Avenue. And what I did was um, consult with the people in the mayor's office, capital projects and that they have the plat maps and access to more county records than we do and determine that the uh, appellants claim that they do not own this property is correct. Um, this was misidentified on the county uh, on my place and, and hopefully I think both the appellant and the city have tried to is, have indicated that the county said they would fix this. But the basic fact is that that property is not the property owned by appellant, that's property owned by the railroad. And therefore, procedurally, I think the easiest way to handle this is what I, and what I advise all the parties here, the city and the appellants, is that we would ask the board to reverse the decision and grant the appeal. And then at that point in time, that can be sent back to licenses and assessments and they'll go to the county to take the, uh, to the assessment off. I mean, there, there was no mistake on anybody. The people in the public works did not make a mistake on this. I mean, they were reasonable and relying on my place. That's what we do. But um, it, it's unfortunate that the appellants had to uh, take the time to deal with this because it really isn't their property. But it wasn't public works fault either. So. Thanks, Lori. Um, yeah, I was wondering about this case as well. So, um, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, Alana, you uh, post that motion that Lori told you to do, and we can move on from this case. Okay. Uh, so, in calendar number 21 102, uh, we're going to, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're asking, we're just going to dismiss this case, Lori. This is 107, Alana. What did I say? Oh, so sorry. Misread. <laughs> One zero two. I, I would grant the appeal. I, I would no. You don't want to dismiss it. You would grant the appeal. Grant the appeal. To determine that the um, further evidence has shown that the city's decision is not supported by the actual facts when you dig in deep enough. And so I'd ask you to grant the appeal. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, I know we had a lot of discussion and this went back and forth when we heard it originally. So uh, I'm glad. Um, thank you for uh, uh, taking the lead and sorting this out. So uh, on calendar number 21-107, uh, I move that we grant the appeal uh, so that uh, action can be taken to correct the situation. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Member Brown, I second. Thank you. Go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. Thank you. Ms. Barnes? Ms. Barnes, yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Vape? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21-107 is granted. It'll be ratified next week, and we will send you a letter. All right, thank you. Moving on. Moving on. Calendar number 21-128. This case was postponed from August 23rd, 2021. Uh, this is regarding 2610 West 11th Street. Uh, Fonder Properties LLC owner proposes to erect a 20 foot by 21 foot one story frame single family residence bedroom addition with an attached eight foot by 20 foot womanized wooden deck to an existing dwelling in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda, of which there are two. The first postponement was made at the request of the councilman to allow time for community review. 
that concludes the reading of the case. Now, for all those persons present that wish to make statements and testimony on, ca on calendar number 21-128, I ask you to raise your right hand. I'm going to read the oath. At the conclusion of the oath, your response will be, I do. You'll state your name and your address one person at a time for the recorder. So please raise your right hand. I do swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do, Larry Fonder, 1654 Glenmont Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. Thank you, Mr. Fonder. I do, Ibrahim Haki, architect. Uh, home is 2427 Grovewood Avenue, Parma, 44134. Thank you, Mr. Hakeem. Next. I do, Donna Gregonis, Tremont West Development Corporation, 3308 Lorraine Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? All right, Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you. A uh, history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. I wasn't able to find any records in our records administration office for this address. There are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, we found that in March of this year, a permit was issued to board one standard size door on a two family dwelling. And then in June of this year, we found that a certificate of uh, disclosure was issued stating that the authorized use of the property is as two family. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the maximum gross floor area and distance requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty, not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Who's going to be the spokesperson for this project? Uh, Larry, I can do that if you'd like. Yes, sir. That's fine. So this is an existing uh, multifamily building. Who, who's are... speaking right now? My apologies. This is Ibrahim, the architect. Thank you. Go ahead. Welcome. All right. This is an existing uh, multifamily building. We are in the midst of converting it to a single family dwelling. As part of that, we would prefer to put a ground floor bedroom in. If you can go back to the previous picture, you can see where the stairs to the outside, to the upstairs used to be on the outside. There you go. So, all right. So, we are removing that stair to the outside. Uh, what you don't see is that the previous construction was uh, really dangerous to say the least. So we're going to put this bedroom at this particular location and provide an internal stair to the second floor. We have gone to Block Club. We've communi communicated with the two neighbors, um, Mary and Sonia, and they are approving, uh, actually emphatically approving our, our request to move forward with this. They've been next to this vacant house for a really long time. So if you can move forward to the design, the addition we're proposing to put we would like to have it the same width as a house so it looks like it's a part of the original construction when this house is built on the opposite side uh, the house is right close to the property line we measure about three foot eight inches and that's where one of the variances is coming into we would like to make sure that we can have the addition in line with the existing house therefore also within that that setback requirement um, and I'm not sure what other pictures are here. We have done our best to to make this a building that will work with the community and uh, again with the neighbors. Thank okay. you. I think we can entertain some questions or additional testimony. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we'll conclude with Donna Gregonis day here at BZA. So Donna, go ahead. Good morning again, Donna Gregonis, uh, Neighborhood <laughs> Development Director for Tremont West Development Corporation. So, uh, Mr. Fonder and uh, Mr. Hockey, 
did present this to the local community and they have, um, and they were uh, very supportive of this because they did do their due diligence. They spoke with the neighbors, received letters in, um, in favor of this project. This pro property does have a long history of um, being a nuisance to the neighborhood. So um, they're excited and welcome this renovation. Um, this was not reviewed by the local economic development committee. So that is the reason why this was asked to be postponed when it hadn't been to block club or economic development committee. So the economic development committee meeting is on Thursday of next week. And I believe um, the design team asked for this to potentially be postponed today so that it could be reviewed by the committee. But we realized that this was on the agenda prior to the meeting. So that is why they um, are here today because Ms. Kukla did ask us to come to the meeting, even though they asked the design team asked to postpone this until after the economic development committee. So I cannot speak um, to say that we are totally in favor, but I know the block club is. So thank you. Thank you. Um I think that's all we have signed up to speak today. So I'll open it up to the board. Chair, did I um did I just hear her act um said that they needed a postponement for a week or two? Uh yeah, no, we're gonna move ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, they okay. they went to the black club. Oh, so fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I haven't heard from city planning though. Maurice, anyone from city planning on or <clears throat> just me? Uh, we support the uh, variances for this uh, project. Uh, as you know, we don't generally like to see the buildings as close as three foot eight inches. Um, when they're supposed to be six feet, but these are existing conditions. They are just maintaining the alignment with the building. Uh, we would recommend that you approve this. And if you feel it, the need, uh, approve it with the condition that the uh, economic committee, uh, I don't know how many more committees they're gonna have to go through before an unofficial city, non-city committees before they get yeah. their approval. Yeah. So we recommend approval. Oh. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, board, uh, any more questions or comments or motions? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, as is typical, I usually ask uh, when we're in, uh, we have houses in close proximity like this, that uh, uh, any, uh, uh, that the fire rating of the um, walls be upgraded from one hour to three hours, um, just because of the close proximity between the buildings. Um, and, um, aside from that, I think we can, these are, uh, this, these improvements to this house are certainly, uh, substantial, uh, with regard to the existing conditions. Uh, it sounds like the residents have been in support. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and, um, uh, approve the variances for this. Thank you. You can have a second, please. Ms. Member Brown, I second. Thank you, Member Brown, second. Go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. Madam Chair, before I do, did we want to add the condition of the fire rating, or are we just putting that in uh, as um, uh, as an understanding that this will happen? Yeah, that's a concern of, of, of Member Faith. I don't think we can uh, adjudicate that as BZA, but we can put it as a concern. Um, as well as we won't hold ratification, but we would like to hear from what happens at the Economic Development Committee uh, next week. Madam Chair, we do have Ibrahim with his uh, hand raised. It, it, the question is in request to the three hour reading versus the one hour reading. Uh, we would request that we meet the building requirements, the, the building code requirements. Um, yeah, we're not we, we're not making that a condition. Wow. That's, right. that's just a suggestion by the board, by our board member. Right. Okay, I'll call the roll. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Bate. Yes. Ms. Britt. Yes. Calendar twenty one dash one twenty eight. 
is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. Thank you. Okay, Madam Chair, do you want to loop back to that first case? Uh, yeah. And, uh, so that's calendar number 21-146. Uh, so we're looking now to see if we have anyone present. Do we have an present. appellant or an agent for that case present? Present. All right. All right, Mr. Martin, uh, we uh, will go ahead and hear your case now since you are present. So this is calendar number 21-146 at 3811 Clinton Avenue, also known as 3809 Clinton. Gary Martin, owner, proposes to erect a two-story frame single-family residence and convert rear house to a carriage house to include two parking spaces in a B1 two family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are four and number four being uh, number four states that the landmarks commission design review approval is required. So I believe uh, you only have one person that's wearing maybe. Yes, I think so. Yes. So, Mr. Martin, I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. And I'm going to read the oath following the oath. Your response will be I do. And then you'll state your name and your address. So here we go. I do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Gary Martin, 1897 West 52nd Street. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I seem to have put that in a different folder. If you could come back to me, that would be great. I apologize. No problem. We'll go to legal standard. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the maximum gross floor area, front yard setback, and minimum lot width requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. And please note that Section 32904C may restrict the board's ability to grant the requested front yard variance. And I should further state that um, staff, at least, is under the impression that the have this having been pointed out to them that the appellant is going to move the house back and comply with a 14.5 foot setback. And, and you can ask him about that. But rather than the 12 foot setback that they were initially um, proposing. That's wonderful. I don't have to rail against these front yard variances coming to us. So that's a good thing. We're, we're, All right. we're trying to help you out there. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank Ms. you. I, I like to complain <laughs> much less. So thank you. <laughs> I have the uh, history for you. I found it. Okay, go ahead. Good to hear. Um, the and then, hold on, hold on, oh, Mr. Sorry. Martin. We got to we got to hear the history of the property, and then we'll go to you. Sorry about that, Mr. Martin. The property was originally zoned apartment house in 1929. In 1985, it was changed to two family. In the records administration office, I found um, an interesting record stating that a permit was issued to relocate a dwelling onto a new foundation on the site from the address of 4711 Tillman to the specific address of 3811 Clinton. Um, and also uh, we found that there was another address uh, associated with this project area, 3809 Clinton. And we found that in 1975 for that address, a permit was issued to demolish a multifamily dwelling on site. And there are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, we found that a certificate of disclosure was issued stating that the authorized use of the property is as two family. And that's all that I have, Madam Chief. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Martin. Speak to the variances that you are requesting today. Um, 
sorry, my, my architect and uh, home builder can be here, but I'll speak to this the best I can. Um, we both all of these uh, conversations and, and the drawings have been approved by uh, all the various block clubs and uh, developments. Um, in agreement with uh, our local Ohio City development and the, uh, I guess, the Clinton Avenue Block Club, we've decided to keep the home in the rear um, to keep the historical aspect and look of the neighborhood. And uh, originally we wanted to knock it down, but we decided to keep it and turn it into a carriage home, um, which um, I, I think that speak to speaks towards the amount of uh, square footage that we end up we ended up building on that's over 50% of the, the lot size. Kind of just give some feedback there. Um, and then as Maurice kind of shook his head to start, we also made the changes to the uh, setback in the front of the home as well. Um, so I, I, to me, I, I think we've kind of made all the changes as, as they've come up along the way. And I, I don't think there's much else to really add there. Thank you. Uh, anyone else from your project? No, not not here at this time. But they're they're on the line. If I have any, if, if you have any quick questions, or you know, great. Madam Chair, I, I believe we do have Don Pettit to uh, represent that they went to the Landmarks Commission. Yeah, I was going to hear from Donna first, and then go to. Okay. Oh, Donna, then go to Don. That was, excuse me for a second. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Donna. Hi, good morning, Donna Gregonis. I don't think I was technically sworn in for this project. I apologize uh, with Ohio City Incorporated Neighborhood Development Director. So this project did go through the long due diligence of going to the local design review committee in addition to Landmarks Commission, and they um, worked with both and the community to listen to their concerns and address those, um, keeping the carriage house or keeping the existing built structure is very important to the community as it is in the historic district and I know we um, applaud them for doing that so there are no um, op there is no opposition from our end uh, regarding the variances uh, and excited to see this come to life soon thanks great thank you Donna go ahead Mr. Pettit thank you Madam Chair uh, uh, the Landmarks Commission approved a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the new construction and the renovation of the existing house on August 12th uh, there's nothing in my records that uh, discuss the front yard setback being an issue, so we would we would support the change, the, the adjustment to the front yard setback. Uh, we support the project. We have no objection to any of the required variances, and we commend the uh, applicant's willingness to uh, maintain the rear house and to work with us on on changes to the front house. So we we're, we're we're totally in support. Thank you. Um, Maurice, are you representing city planning for this one? Yes, well, we, we concur with the Landmarks Commission on this, and I did work with Mr. Martin and somebody else, I can't remember his, the other gentleman's <laughs> name, uh, on moving Jason, the setback, you know, on a, <laughs> complying with the setback, and they were more than happy to uh, slide the building back. They they were under, they did not realize that the house had to be, uh, that, that we don't include uh, the front porches. Uh, on the setback, so they were basing it on the, uh, the property next door that does, in fact, have a porch. So uh, and that would yes, be we fully problem. support the projects. Great, thank you. Uh, or questions, comments, motions. Um, can I make a point? Uh, I'm the owner of next door. I think the porch that you're referring to. Uh, yeah, who's speaking? Uh, uh, Joel Soloway. I was sworn oh, yes, in earlier. Go, yes, go ahead. Yeah, we, we certainly uh, representing the existing townhomes, you know, have no issues whatsoever with with the uh, the new home. I think it's uh, uh, definitely something that the neighborhood um, would enjoy having compared to the state of the property over the last several years. There are a few concerns that were brought up uh, during our HOA meetings that I just wanted to bring to the attention of this group, and that would be uh, there are were two existing uh, very large trees that were removed from the west end of the um, of the property. I don't know if you can see them in any of the. Uh, they were already gone, I think, at this point. 
Um, the and and they were quite large, but the um, stumps are still existing. And one of the issues on the one furthest to the south, closest to the uh, existing home, uh, the rooting system has impacted our um, our property, uh, including the uh, the fence. Um, and we can see that the rooting is is very close. Whether it has actually impacted the foundation, we don't know. I, I would like to at least bring this to the attention that any issues relating to the removal of the stumps, as well as replacement of the fencing, uh, would be taken into consideration. Um, so we, as uh, existing ho uh, town homeowners, aren't um, stuck with with this issue in terms of any repairs required in our property line. Um, and finally, the last thing only is, is, as you can see from that photo, that deck, uh, that's our, our particular deck that extends to our fence line. So that is only giving us a, you know, of course, the, the 5 foot uh, separation between the homes. I just want to make sure that, um, you know, that proper consideration is made to landscaping um, to the best that, that can be done in terms of maintaining um, privacy. Um, for for us, other than that, I mean, we love the design of the home. I think the the architect uh, Gary, I think, has done uh, done a great job in due diligence. I know it's quite an issue trying to preserve that house. We as as uh, you know, homeowners really were looking more for the demolishing of that just because the property was significantly not historic to that uh, property because it was moved. So those are my points. Um, thank you uh, for that consideration. I'd like to hear some feedback. Thank you, um, Mr. Martin. Just take into consideration, be a good neighbor to um, what the the folks in the townhouse next door, um, what their con considerations are. Um, are you willing to look into those things? You, I mean, we're yes, not gonna... yes, yes, for sure. I'm willing to look into those things. I know um, probably the approvals will start to be start the digging process on our basement, and I'll speak with the builder to see how that works and how that pertains to the fence and. I assume we might be running into tree roots there, so um, I'll, I'll just make sure I mention it. Great, thank you. Board members? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't think I have any further questions or anything to add. Sounds like Mr. Martin is uh, willing to address all the issues that Mr. Salloway had mentioned. Uh, just as a point of clarification, uh, all parties making testimony uh, were sworn in. When we first read the case, we were just missing Mr. Martin at that time. So um, we, we uh, everyone has been sworn in that made testimony. Uh, so uh, given that, um, these are fairly standard uh, variances that we see so often in this neighborhood. And it has the support of city planning. It has uh, support of uh, the neighbors. So uh, I go. I I motion that we go ahead and uh, approve the variances for calendar number twenty one dash one forty six. Thank you. You can have a second. This is Member Brown. I second. Member Brown, second. Thank you. Can you call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. Thank you, Madam Chair, and that is also um, pending the revised drawing. I'm not sure if that's been delivered to me yet. Showing that and there's a condition. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Bay? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21-146 is granted conditionally. It'll be ratified once we receive that uh, revised drawing and we will ratify it the Monday after and then we will send you a letter. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. I believe that concludes all of our cases, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much. Old business one through six without objection. Without objection. And what's the reinstatement here, Ms. Kukula? This is the case last week where the appellant did not show up at the hearing. 
she stated that she had the date wrong in her calendar and would like to be reinstated. Okay, we always we always uh, give people one chance so she can come back without objection. Without objection. Without, and Madam Chair, without sorry. objection. We can put that on the uh, October 25th agenda. All right, that's not loaded up, is it? No, ma'am. All righty, 1025. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Member Brown, question, or do you feel like you're comfortable enough to swear people in for the next meeting so that uh, Ms. Faith is not pulling double duty anymore? You're muted. I, I didn't know about the sharing, but yes, I will give it a try. Yeah, well, all the all the words are on the screen, so you just have to read those off. So um, everything here is written out. So in case anyone stumbles, um, but yeah, we we share the load. Everyone does something, but sometimes some of us pull a double. Our other man is not present, so he's normally the one that does the swear again. So, so I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate Great. that too. 